Hello to my first ever um, Minecraft custom NPCs tutorial. I'm gonna, today I'm going to like go over the basics of how to use the mod, and I'll teach you how to make a, uh, a generic citizen, um, such as this man back here. This man. This is a really great mod for Minecraft, um, and it'll allow you to add obviously custom non-player characters into your world and adventure maps, such as uh, these two guards right here in my small village of Stillwater, which is inspired by Riverwood from Skyrim. So if you walk up to these guys, you can talk to them, and they say some generic quotes. I'm uh, borrowing mine from uh, Skyrim at the moment, uh, but I'll probably write some custom dialogue for them later. This was just kind of to get them in. Uh, they cycle through different quotes when you go to talk to them. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that, as well as uh, some other things. So let's just let's just come over here. All right. So first, I'm just going to run over the tools you need. So after you've properly installed the mod, in um, creative mode, you will be able to find this, a uh, custom NPC tools tab in your creative menu. Um, and then inside that, there's a whole bunch of uh, tools for you to use. And, uh, the ones that you are really going to uh, want to learn and worry about are the NPC wand, the mob cloner, and the pather. So the NPC wand is where you will create um, NPCs and uh, edit them. The mob cloner, you can clone NPCs you've made and spawn them again. You can also use it to spawn mobs already in the game. So if I wanted to click the ground, I could spawn a zombie right there without using a spawn egg. Um, and the NPC pather, which will allow you to set custom paths for your uh, NPCs, such as this guy right here, or this guard right here, who will walk along a set path like this. And he does this day in, day out, night and day. Patrol city and makes us all safe. So first we're going to start out with the um, NPC wand. Uh, so to begin, I'm just going to click the ground, and that spawns you in um, a generic Steve with a random name. So the first thing you'll want to do is change his name if you are not okay with the uh, kind of default generic name that they give him. I suck at coming up with names, so I use a website called fantasynamegenerators.com. So I would go there. They've got a whole bunch of different name generators. So I'm just going to give him just kind of a generic name. Let's name him... Uh, that's a good one. Gavin... Gavin Reed. We'll name him Gavin Reed. Okay, so this is Gavin Reed. You can edit his texture by clicking the Select button uh, right here. So there's a ton of different textures in this mod. These are the human males right here. Uh, and then if you click up a directory, you will come to all these categories. So you can make crystals, dragons, dwarves, elves, um, Golems, humans, monsters, stuff like that. I'm just going to start, not monster, I'm just going to make a generic human, and I'll come down here, and I know that I like Villager Steve and Villager Steve 2. So we'll do Villager Steve 1. Um, another cool new feature, so only newer versions of the mod have this, is in the Edit tab. You can click that, you can click Eyes, and then he has these animated eyes, and you can change the color. I'm just going to give him brown eyes. So just kind of click around, find a color you like. I'm just going to give him brown eyes like that. And if you just saw that, um, the eyes blink. And that is very good for making your NPCs look alive. All right, so there we go. We have Gavin Reed. Uh, only things that have been changed is his uh, skin and his name so far. If you right-click a brand new NPC, they will always say hello and then your username. 
So after you have created your new NPC, if you right-click him with the NPC wand, you will open up his little menu window. And now I'll just go over kind of the generic settings. Um, some of these are obvious. Uh, so obviously his name, you should know what that does. Uh, title uh, uh, will appear under his name in uh, brackets like that. Let's get rid of that. He's not a drunk. You can give him a cape. You can give him an overlay uh, just by clicking Select Texture. Uh, you can choose if he's visible or not. If you select No, he will be invisible. If you select Partial, he'll be a ghost. Uh, so that's the Display tab. If we click on Stats, you can see his health. You can change his respawn rate. You can change how strong he is at fighting. You can change how good he is at ranged combat with a bow and arrow, and you can change the projectile type. So you can make it um, a magic spell, and I'll go over that in a future episode, how to make your NPCs cast magic. You can go over his resistances, so I can make it so that he takes absolutely no damage from explosions and arrows. Uh, down here, you can give him immunities, so I can make him immune to fire, I can make him poison immune. Uh, I can make it so that cobwebs won't affect him, I can make it so fall damage won't affect him. You can set him to drown, you can set him to burn in sunlight if you're making a vampire or an undead. Uh, you can change his character type up here. And that really is only useful for the um, enchants in the game. So if you set him to undead, smite will do damage to him. If you set him to arthropod, bane of arthropods will do damage to him. You can change his health regen and his regen in combat. So if he's fighting someone, he will stop regenerating health. But you can change that. All right, so we're going to move on. The AI tab. Uh, you can set what he does if he sees an enemy. Uh, so the, uh, you can set him to retaliate. Uh, panic, where he'll just run away. Retreat, where he'll he'll still fight, but he will uh, he'll like back up. Uh, you can set him to do nothing, so he'll just ignore him. Or you can set him to retaliate, where he will go and rush and attack them. Door interact. I can set him to open doors if I want him to. I can tell him if he's allowed to swim or not. I can make him hide from darkness or sunlight. Uh, this I would recommend just leaving on for the most part. Uh, this basically says if he's going to attack someone, he has to have a line of sight to see them so he can't attack people around corners. Uh, this you can set him so that he will be able to see people that are invisible and still attack them. Uh, this I'll get back to in a second. You can set him to avoid water. Uh, run to start means that every once in a while he'll return to a start point, which is right here. And leap at target, he will jump when he attacks. So we'll do like a forward jump attack. Now, tactical variant, there's a couple of options. He can rush the target. He can dodge, which means he will kind of stay back and surround them while still attacking. He can surround them where anybody set to surround will surround the enemy and kind of close them in. Uh, hit and run, he'll attack and then run away. Ambush, he will try to hide and then sneak up on you. And stalk, he will just straight sneak up on you. And this one, he does not need to see the target to uh, gain aggro. And then none. I like to keep them on rush unless there is some reason to. So let's move on to the movement tab. So if you click on that, you will get movement types. So standing, he'll stand still. Wandering, he will wander around randomly. Moving path, he will follow a path that you set with the path or tool. And then we're back to standing. For just general citizens, I like to set them to wandering. Uh, and you can set them to one to. Uh, you know, walk or fly. I recommend keeping them on walk unless you're doing something specific. Um, the range is how far away he can go from his start point. 
interact with the NPCs means that he will walk up to other NPCs and, quote, have conversations with them. And that appears with a, uh, a speech bubble above his head. Uh, and then you can set his animation so you can set him to be uh, just regular walking and standing still, sneaking, uh, aiming on a bow, dancing, crawling, hugging, and then back to normal. You can set him to stop and interact, so if he's walking around and you try to talk to him, he will stop and talk to you. And then you can set his movement speed. In moving path, we've got some of the same. Uh, these two are the same options. Looping means he will either uh, go through the uh, path you set up and then go back to start and then go through it again. Backtracking, which I use for guards, they will follow the path, get to the end, turn around, and then walk back. Pauses is they will... Pauses determines if they stop at every single point uh, you click on. Um, I'm going to leave this guy on wandering for now. And let's move on to the inventory tab. So this is a uh, basic inventory tab. So you can set him to hold things. This is my work lathe. <laughs> Uh, so he can hold them like that. And yes, he can dual wield. Um, you can, put, if you put something here and he is set to attack from uh, range, he will actually shoot whatever is there. Uh, you can set the minimum experience you get from killing him and the maximum that you get from killing him. Uh, you can tell him to auto-pick up items on the ground or not. And then in here is his drop chances. So you can add an item, say I want to make him 100% of the time drop this item. Now if I go and kill him 100% of the time, he will drop that item. Now, moving on to the advanced tab, I'm just going to very quickly go over these because I'll do my own episodes on each individual uh, thing here. So you can give him um, a role to play, basically. Uh, so he can be a trader where if you go up and talk to him, he can uh, trade items with you that you set up. So if you come in here, you can set up the trades. He can be a follower, in which case uh, you will go up and talk to him and you can set him, and he will basically become a companion for you. Uh, you can set him to be a bank. That didn't work. You can set him to be a bank, uh, and if you do, he will access a, uh, a public bank for the entire world that you set up, so you can store items in it. You can set him to be a transporter, which is like a flight master if you're used to um, MMORPGs like EverQuest or... Uh, World of Warcraft. You can set him to be a mailman. That's pretty obvious. You could send letters to other players if you're playing on a server with the mod installed. And a companion, which is a work in progress uh, option. I haven't played much around with it, so I don't really know how it works. Um, or you can set him to be a dialogue person. Uh, so basically, you write down your starting dialogue, and then you write down some dialogue options. And then you can write, fill in his responses there. I'm not going to go over that too much right now. We'll go over it in the future. And then this is going to be the last option I cover in this episode, and that is the jobs. So you can set your NPC to be a bard, in which case you can tell them uh, what instrument to play, and then what like sound or song to play. Uh, it's kind of complex to get working, but it is really cool when you do get it working. You can set him to be a beacon, in which case he will act like a beacon in game. You can set him to, when you're around him, he will give you uh, potion effects. You can set him to be a guard, so he can, you can set him to attack animals, monsters, and creepers. You can be sent to an item giver, so when you talk to him or walk by him, he will say in chat, here, take these, and then he will give you some items that you set up. Uh,
I'm not sure what this fo- how this follower differs from the last one because I haven't played with it yet. Um, and a spawner, you can set him to a k- to randomly spawn other NPCs you've created. This is good for like big boss mobs. So in a different map, I made a lich, and he would spawn skeletons. Or you can set him to a conversation, in which case you will talk to him, and then you can have a conversation with him. This is another one I haven't played too much with, because it's kind of a newer option. I usually just go through the dialogue system. And then a chunk loader, you can uh, set him in a specific area, and he will keep those chunks loaded even when you're not there, so stuff never despawns. A puppet, which I think is the last option, you can basically adjust... um, his things, which is not working right now. But you can basically move his arms around like a, like a figure. Builder is another one I haven't really played around with, but it um, basically you can uh, create patterns, and then the, you can set NPCs to, as builders, and they will actually go through and build those patterns. So you could set up a construction crew, I guess. That'd be kind of cool. Um, especially if you're a server uh, owner and you want to add something to like a city, like say you're running a, uh, an RP server um, and you don't want to shut down the server to build something new, you could build something uh, like way away from the server where nobody's going to find it, create it as a pattern, and then tell your NPCs to go through and build it for you so it looks like uh, the characters in the world are building it, not, you know, God. And then a farmer, you can, uh, if you put them in a field of pla- of crops, uh, they will, when the crops grow to full, they will harvest them and they will put them in a nearby chest. All right. So that's all the basics that I'm going to go over for now. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want more of these. In the next episode, I'm going to go over some of the more advanced options like factions and the, uh, quote, lines. All right, so I will see you then.